Okay, so what I've got here is what's called a grunt gasket. That's the name given to it by its originators, uh, Dominant Saws. Um, I was lucky enough that one of my feeds had given me a post of theirs that showed off this, uh, this product or this little piece of metal that they had milled, I believe. Um, it was, it didn't have diverging or tapered walls. It was just a straight shot that they put in between the jug and the can on an MS-880. And they reported some seriously, uh, impressive anecdotal, uh, gains in low and mid, uh, mid, uh, range power. Now, they never got it on a dyno, and I was saddened when I googled and found that no one, including them, has ever updated this concept. Um, it kind of surprises me. I figured an OEM would have picked up on this by now. Um, I mean, in the same way that an MS-661 has heat shielding, but for an MS-660, you gotta make your own little aluminum sheet. You'd think that they would have figured out by now that having a lengthening of the exhaust tract and a physical separation right now you're talking about a six degree i'm sorry a six millimeter separation between the hut side of your cylinder and the back end of the muffler <laughs> so just adding a quarter inch uh, bar of aluminum uh, cut to be a gasket you're already doubling how far the spread is there but keeping the muffler uh, away um, from, uh, you know, up to an inch away before the front of your muffler starts to protrude off your case and you no longer have a work saw. Um, it, it, so keeping it within bounds, let's say one eighth of an inch back from the front most of the, of the crankcase, it lets you get about one inch of a uh, grunt gasket or lead in pipe, whatever you want to call it in here. Um, that does two huge things. Um, there are three huge things, really. Um, it, it, number one is, like I said, it's separating the, the hot muffler from the hot side of the cylinder, letting this run cooler, letting you have more oxygen molecules per cc of air, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it, even though we can't use the acoustics of a, uh, of a true pipe muffler, of an expansion chamber type muffler, because we don't have the length to, to, to harness and work with those, uh, those, those uh, acoustic pulses, there is a part of those systems that are a couple parts that we really should be aware of because they do still affect us very significantly on OPE or outdoor power equipment like this. Um, and the grunt gasket, thankfully, addresses them all. So I'm, that's why I'm so shocked that it didn't catch on once Dominant Saws introduced it. Um, I'm surprised OEMs didn't come up with it first. Um, but let's, let's consider a couple things in turn. Number one, exhaust cracks open, blow down or depressurization begins so that you can have it back down to atmosphere before your, or almost at least uh, back to atmosphere before your transfers crack. That's good blow down. That's so that you're not putting pressure on the transfer loop, undue pressure on the transfer loop um, and sabotaging and putting friction on your piston, which is going to be rotational drag, which is in that type of rotational drag on the piston is actually to the third power. You're hitting the piston, pushing into the small end bearing, pushing into the large end bearing, pushing into the crank. Um, and I'm not making that up. Uh, maybe I'm misinterpreting it. And I'm happy to quote the page from Jennings' uh, book on two strokes where he speaks of it being losses to the third power. It's a very strong parasitic drag, similar to how it would be if you over advance your timing and your spark lead is over lead and it's slamming that piston with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with force while it's still halfway up you know, from bottom dead center. Um, if you way over advanced your timing, uh, you know, you would be working against the piston. And when you're fighting against the piston, it's losses to the third. It's different than just say friction on the uh, cylinder wall or something where it would just be straight losses. Although actually that might be double losses because the piston pivots, but let's leave that alone. That's for a different video. <laughs> um, so we add in one of these grunt gaskets and instead of adding a straight walled one like Dominant Saw's prototype, and it was just a prototype, that's all they had to do because the idea was the important part. Um, they, uh, uh, we add a taper. So now when the exhaust cracks open and that gas, that hot pressurized gas is rushing from high pressure hot in the cylinder to low pressure cool in the muffler, 
and it's going to puff that muffler's pressure up to like six, seven, eight, nine PSI, by the way, uh, by the time that blowdown uh, or depressurization of the cylinder is complete. Right now, we have effectively a, sh a sawed off shotgun if we've mega phoned, which I would say is probably a smart idea. Uh, half mega phoned, at least if you're stuck with that eighth of an inch tall exhaust tract. However, if you use a grunt gasket, of just one inch, which lets you stay within your eighth of an inch behind the crankcase and not do a delete of the front uh, half of your muffler, which is the last thing you want to do. You don't want to reduce volume. You would be trying to increase volume, but that's for other reasons. That's for dulling the acoustic bounce back, which I'll talk about in the muffler or exhaust uh, video. Um, but as far as as far as these actual grunt gaskets go, you are going to be not just separating that. That's actually the weakest reason of the three to even use it, honestly. The important ones are that by using diverging walls, no no uh, no no steep walls like on a diverging cone inside of an expansion chamber because we don't have the length to work with acoustics. It's just not going to happen without on a work saw. However, on a if you look at the parts of a uh, of a full expansion chamber muffler, there's what's called a, a, a lead-in pipe before the divergence cone. Those are either straight-walled or to increase what's called inertial evacuation of the cylinder, they'll be tapered at about one and a half to two degrees. That's what we are going to be doing with our grunt gaskets. Now, by doing that, when the exhaust cracks open and blowdown starts or depressurization starts, exhaust port has just cracked open. The the, uh, the gas is going through a tube, and that tube is in a uh, a diverging cone, uh, uh, so to speak. What that allow uh, what that creates is a situation where every single particle of gas has behind it. It has a hot, high pressure, massive. Uh, particles and in front of it, it has a cooler lower pressure mass what that causes is it causes that particle to speed up but that's happening that can be said of every particle of gas that's moving there during depressurization so what you have is a suction a pull effect and this is uh this is the case on a true expansion chamber as well it's still it, it, you still use ideally you get a one and a half to two degree divergence um on your lead-in pipe to aid with inertial evacuation and that is in consideration only of the physical gas the exhaust gas it's not to to create sonic pulses it's not long enough nor is it divergent enough um, you need steeper angles between 5 and 10 degree divergence uh, to create sonics, uh, usable sonic uh, pulls. Um, but you also need length over which to do that, which we cannot have on a work saw. At any rate, um, so by having that pull effect, not only can we reduce below down uh, uh, degrees required for depressurization by a little bit. I don't know how, by how much uh, hate on me in the, or help me or hate on me <laughs> in the uh, comments. I'm not sure how much we can shorten blow down, but if you attach a turbocharger to the exhaust, it, then it's going to move faster in the same way that widening or raising the port edges would. Um, however, it's not just that. At the end of that suction, when depressurization or blowdown is achieved and we're starting to see the transfers open, there's going to be a quick moment of suck still, which is going to effectively be priming the transfers and starting that transfer loop with a little bit of pull. And that matters a lot because uh, forces against the piston or for the piston um, are to the third because they're hitting the piston connecting a, a small end bearing uh, and then the big end bearing than the than the crankshaft I can quote the page of Jennings uh, Peter I want to say Peter Jennings uh, book on two strokes that explains this but it, it, it's not the same thing as frictional losses against the cylinder wall which is a one-to-one -one, I believe actually I could see an argument for two two to one but um, but it's a three to one loss when you're pushing against your piston because say you have your transfers cracking open when blowdown has not even halfway been accomplished or finished. Um, so we have diverging walls which are aiding with blowdown. So in addition to the spread between the can and the uh, jug, we have that. Now we have another benefit still. 
Anytime that we have a muffler or a can or an exhaust system attached, which we have to, it's a bleed off for the entire system, no matter how you want to look at it, you, have, you, you do not want an, a no exhaust system. That's never going to be an optimal. Um, however, with these types of setups, we have these little cans. So even if you had all the computing power in the world to, to understand the sonics going on in here, you don't have the space to control the bounce back and plan it and use it. And if you know anything about expansion chambers, you know that an, a miss, a, a, an improperly timed pulse is worse, way worse than no pulse at all. I mean, an expansion chamber is gonna be adding 20 to 35%, as far as I understand it, uh, of the power of the total, uh, towards the total power of uh, a motorcycle, a go-kart, a boat. We don't have those on OP on out outdoor power equipment. And if we want to keep this as a work saw, we have to keep it within bounds um, of that crankcase. So we can get about an extra inch. But that lets us, like I said, that turns an, uh, uh, an eighth of an inch long exhaust, uh, exhaust tract into a nearly two inch long one. It spreads the can. And with that divergence, we get suction. But there's one last thing that it gives us. That divergence while creating suction, while the exhaust, is, uh, while the while depressurization and blowdown are uh, are engaged in, in occurring, um, after that's done and the piston's gone through, it, it's gone through the hole, gone through bottom dead center, and it's on its way back up. That's a moment that we actually don't really like with uh, with a traditional piston ported engine because yeah, that's why someone like John from John's Custom Saws won't talk about duration he'll only talk in terms of timing and the reason is because once the pistons come out of the hole or once the piston is past bottom dead center and it's on its compression stroke and it's one degree two degrees out of the hole uh, after bottom dead center and it's uh, upwards the exhaust port is obviously still wide open the, the exhaust port is at maximum open when the piston's at dead bottom center so that is literally the exact halfway point of the duration. So the other half of the exhaust open duration sees the piston coming upwards, meaning that all that nice charge that just came up through your transfers, it's now being pressurized by the up swinging piston and the exhaust port still open. An expansion chamber muffler, like a pipe muffler, the baffle cone, the, the, the rear cone on that, the pulse from that is a, uh, a, it's referred to as plugging, and that arrives at just the right time to prevent charge from spilling, excess charge rather, from spilling out of that exhaust port. We don't have room to play with, uh, with any of these pulses. However, it turns out that if you were to say, fabricate yourself a, a pipe for a motorcycle, and you went and you put a strong, uh, too strong of an angle in, let's say, uh, something in your, uh, too strong of an angle in your header. So let's say, I'm sorry, not your header, your lead in pipe. I know it's still kind of the same thing, but these are two strokes. So we're going to call them grunt gaskets or lead in pipes. Let's say that you made it so that the, uh, the, uh, let's say that your taper on your lead in pipe or your grunt gasket was such that the, uh, the exit was th three times the surface area as the entrance. Anything past a three to one ratio means that when that return exhaust, uh, when that sonic pulse is returning, if it has to enter a cone that is more than a three to one surface area difference between entry and exit of that cone on the lead-in pipe, it effectively negates almost all of the energy. So on a, uh, when you're tuning and building an expansion chamber muffler, or, uh, yeah, muffler, uh, or pipe rather, you don't want that because you don't want to block your 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 baffle uh, cones return sonic pulse. You want that. You want that plugging up your. You want it hitting at just the right time. But we we don't have it hitting at the right time. We have these tiny little cans, so we know for a fact it's hitting both at a time we can't predict and way earlier because there's just not enough room for the pulse to go anywhere and hang out anywhere. So all we can do is dull it with baffle plates and whatnot. And with divergent tubed headers, because they dull the wave's uh, amplitude entering back and hitting that cylinder. So there's three very strong reasons for using these grunt gaskets. They're easy to use. 
they're aesthetically inconspicuous, and all three of the benefits that they provide are what one would call good, clean, free power. Um, so, yeah, I genuinely hope someone besides me can run with this, because as far as I can tell, this will be the third mention of the term grunt gasket on the internet. Uh, the first one being dominant saws, and the second one being a one-post mention question of it on the OPE forums. So as far as I can tell, this is a third mentioning of it, mentioning of this concept. I am going to tag Dino Joe, um, and I'm also going to tag dominant saws, and actually John's custom saws. Um, as I'd love to see any, especially all of you run with this, um, as I expect it's just simple, free, easy, uh, or as I would bet money that it is, uh, uh, going to add power. It's just a question of how much power and you can actually tune this kind of thing. Like for instance, doing multi-stage, uh, multi-angled diffusion and diversions will affect uh, will affect this. I strongly suggest that if you want to understand how the angles work, that you read the uh, the chapters on expansion chambers in either uh, Jennings or Blair's books. Both of them cover it plenty fine. Um, it, I know it stinks that we can't use acoustics, but you got to understand them because no matter what, they are in play. No matter what, when you slam uh, an exhaust pulse into that muffler can, it, you have a sonic pulse no matter what, and so you got to deal with it. In fact, I, uh, I'm going to save it for the, the mufflers video, or the exhaust system video, and obviously I understand that a header's video is pretty interrelated, but, um, but I actually would advise using, for instance, something like a baffle plate, a non-restrictive baffle plate. People hear baffle plate and they automatically have a knee-jerk reaction that it's going to choke off their saw because every single baffle plate they've seen is an OEM baffle plate that does show off the saw. They don't have to. And having a baffle plate like that is going to do what? It's going to break up and slow down the exhaust pulse's sonic wave. So it's going to do a lot for it before the before it even gets back to your port. And if you have a grunt gasket, now it's got to fight its way through there. And if you have a three to one angling, it basically can't make it. So that's why grunt gaskets are awesome. They're obviously very easy. Um, I would uh, I would be using uh, uh, squishy type gaskets uh, like this, or the cylinder base types such as this, or even if you have the tolerance and skill with a grinder, OEMs like this. If you're using flanges, if you're using, say, bar aluminum, which is also very easy to work with, you just need a grinder and a step drill bit and an impact drill. Um, those are quarter inch, so you can just do three of them together, boom, 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 have a three quarter inch uh, grunt gasket. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, oh, the moto seal, uh, the moto seal. I would, uh, I was strong in, and the, uh, marine grease. I would use marine grease at every single joint when, uh, when, when affixing everything. Obviously, you're going to need longer M5 and M6s and some washers so that you can seat the muffler properly. Um, you're going to want to invert your saw when you do this. Um, if you've ever installed a muffler on a saw, you probably have figured out by now that inverting the saw is the only way to do it without trying to balance the thing. Um, or trying to like prop up the muffler and get those saw, uh, those bolts into the flange. Um, so you're going to want to, you know, have it inverted perfectly and take your time and line everything up. Um, and I would put moto seal inside of the, uh, the, the flange, uh, the, the, the screw uh, holes um, that run through the grunt gaskets because you're going to want to take a drill bit and get rid of the threading in there because there's no way that you're going to be able to match up the end of the grunt gaskets threading with the beginning of the flanges threading. Um, they're, they're, they're never going to align. So you have to just dog that out and that's fine because it's just a spacer. The pressure is coming from a lock washer seated beneath a he a, 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 a bolt's head. That's going to penetrate through the back of the muffler, through the grunt gasket and into this long, nice long receptacle on the cylinder wall. So 
that's grunt gaskets or headers for two strokes in a nutshell. Um, again, I am hoping someone can run with this because I know there's big gains to be made here. Big safe gains. Thanks for watching.